Have you ever experienced gaps in your health care? You know, where it could have been better, but it wasn't? My grandmother is 81 now, and she's had lots of interactions with the health care system over the past 20 years or so. She used to be really physically active, enjoyed walking and swimming. She really took care of herself. Then she developed arthritis, and slowly over the years she developed something called a valgus deformity in her knees, and it got harder and harder for her to walk. My dad suggested that she meet with an orthopedic surgeon to talk about the possibility of a knee surgery. She refused, however, because one of her good friends had experienced a slow, painful recovery following a knee replacement, and she was afraid of the same thing happening to her. As her knees got worse, she stopped exercising and gained roughly 40 pounds over the next 10 years. Around this time, she also began experiencing episodes of atrial fibrillation, for which she was prescribed anticoagulants. Shortly after, in the spring of 2001, my grandmother experienced the grief of losing her daughter, my aunt, to melanoma. She began showing signs of depression, but was not placed on an antidepressant at her own insistence. In the past 10 years, her knees have deteriorated to the point where she can't walk at all. She now uses a wheelchair. Two years ago, her cardiologist diagnosed her with mild congestive heart failure. Today, she lives in an assisted living facility where we visit her every chance that we get. She says that she is happy there. I have to wonder, though, if our health care system has failed my grandmother in certain ways. It's not that she doesn't have access to good care. She has the resources to afford great medical care. Instead, I think that her lack of trust in doctors, along with her lack of continuity of care, have led her to the less than ideal situation that she finds herself in today. I know that my grandmother is as strong-willed as she is loving, but at the same time, I have to wonder if maybe her doctors never took the time to explain to her all of the benefits of a knee replacement. Maybe they didn't have the time at all. Maybe there's a way doctors can work better with other healthcare professionals and processes to make sure that people like my grandmother can get the preventative and chronic care that they need before everything gets so much worse. The goal of the UCSF Bridges curriculum is to better prepare physicians to contribute more than clinical experience to the complex systems in which they work. Students and the physicians they will become need to learn to work collaboratively and innovate continuously within systems to improve the care we can deliver to our patients so that biomedical advances today translate into improved health tomorrow. To do this, the Bridges curriculum will provide authentic workplace learning experiences that leverage the talents and commitment of our students to improve health today while sustaining these skills in future practice. The story of my grandmother reminds me that some of the gaps in the quality of clinical care are not access-based, nor are they always due to a lack of available therapeutics. They can also be due to inadequate continuity of care. I wish we could build a system that allowed physicians to work more collaboratively with nurses and other health professionals so no one burns out and so they can all stay persistent and empathetic. Maybe a system that is built in ways of following up with patients like my grandmother, people who need more time or guidance to get the help that they need. It could have different modes of following up with folks like her, like scheduled, regular outreach for people who opt not to take antidepressants. That wouldn't have to be done by the physician. It could be someone else on her team. Maybe even a well-trained medical student once we get the Bridges curriculum up and running. I'm Michael Davies, first-year medical student at UCSF. This is my story, and this is why I'm helping to build Bridges. <laughs>